And to discuss his diplomatic trip, I'm joined live from Tel Aviv in Israel by political analyst Tom Gross. Tom, Hi. thanks so much for joining us today here on A News. Now, this is a difficult time for Joe Biden as he's, um, he's polling fairly low uh, in the United States at the moment. But opportunities may be for big diplomatic outcomes. Um, well, how do you evaluate the, the visit in terms particularly of peace and security for the Middle East? Yes. <clears throat> well, there are several reasons that uh, Joe Biden has decided to visit the Middle East at this moment. Uh, let me start actually with the domestic reason. Because of the Ukraine war, there is a, you know, and sanctions on Russia, there's a global energy crisis, and you have um, gas going to $5 a uh, barrel, which is a lot for in the US, which is very dependent on driving. So um, one of the aims here is to get Saudi Arabia to pump, up, pump out more oil uh, and put it onto the market. And um, Biden had said that he was going to essentially make Saudi Arabia a pariah he said this during the election campaign mm -hmm. because of the murder of the Washington Post journalist, um, Jamal Khashoggi. And now Biden, in fact, needs the Saudis. So um, he wants to visit Saudi Arabia. Um, he's got to kind of pay homage to MBS, to Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince. But he can't fly directly to Saudi Arabia. So he is starting by going to Israel and the West Bank for two days um, to sort of give him diplomatic cover before going to Saudi, which in my view is the more important part of the leg, uh, more important leg of his journey. You know, it's just in the last hour announced that uh, annual inflation in the United States had reached 9.1%, which is the highest right. rate for 40 years. So, you know, all politics is domestic. Domestic. I think his main aim here is to get the Saudis to, to put more oil onto the market to reduce the price of oil. Having said that, of course, there are um, diplomatic and strategic and foreign affairs um, uh, issues also. Um, first of all, a lot has changed since Joe Biden last visited the Middle East six years ago as vice president. The Palestinian-Israeli conflict is no longer at the heart of the uh, agenda of issues being discussed in the Middle East. Uh, Israel has signed peace agreements in the meantime under the auspices of the Trump administration with uh, the United Arab Emirates, um, Bahrain, Morocco and um, Sudan. And it's also got increasingly warm ties with a whole bunch of other Arab countries, including Saudi Arabia, which it doesn't officially have ties yet. So uh, Biden, in a way, or America in a way, is playing catch up uh, to play a hand in this increasing sort of rapprochement between Israel and the Arab world. So that's one reason that Biden's coming. Another is to coordinate on the threat of an Iranian nuclear missile or nuclear arsenal, which pretty much everyone else in the Middle East, every other country is very concerned about, as well as the United States. So there will be some coordination between that, um, that on that issue between Israel and, and Arab countries. And then another reason is, um, again, a little bit domestic. In Israel, there is a new interim prime minister who's holding office for four months before elections will be held on November 1st. That interim prime minister who met Biden this afternoon upon his arrival is Yair Lapid, who, like Biden, is a centre-left politician facing, uh, both of them in fact face uh, difficult elections in November. Israel has a general election, the United States has the midterms, both are not doing that well in poll ratings, and in a way they're trying to boost each other's credibility by meeting uh, to show uh, their domestic uh, audience uh, that they are statesmen on the world stage and so on. And in fact Biden and Lapid, you know, they have a similar outlook ideologically and probably get along quite well. Um, Biden's also always been a, you know, a, quite a good friend of Israel. 
He's been here 10 times as a politician. I actually went to a reception with him on one of his visits as vice president. That was a visit in 2010. And, you know, he was very warm. I think there's a genuine warmth. He said upon his arrival at the airport this afternoon, uh, something along the lines of, you don't have to be Jewish to be a Zionist, talking about himself. In other words, he's a, he's a long-term supporter of the state of Israel. So he's, he's among friendly faces here, and he probably needs friendly faces given the uh, very low poll ratings in the US, not just among the general public, but even among the Democratic Party, his own Democratic Party. There was a New York Times poll uh, last week that said an astonishing 64% of Democrats don't want him to run again for president in 2024. So uh, those are some of the main issues why he's uh, coming now. Right. You say he's, he's among friendly faces in, in Israel, and, and yet, uh, in his visit, I think it was in 2010, rather embarrassing situation where he spoke against the, um, uh, the building of... Um, uh, of new housing for Israeli citizens in uh, occupied territories, um, which prompted him to leave that visit early. Is, is there a, a sense that a sense of nervousness that some similar diplomatic faux pas may happen again during this trip? I think uh, there's always a sense of nervousness uh, that Joe Biden may, might make a diplomatic faux pas. Also, because of his age, he is not as vigorous and not as on the ball as he once was and has made various slip-ups on all kinds of issues, domestic and foreign, since he became president. And for that reason, I took a close look at his itinerary, and it's rather light. So today, for example, after he arrived at about three o'clock this afternoon, he's presently uh, being shown the new Israeli uh, defense system, which is called the Iron Beam, in addition to the Iron Dome, both of these uh, are missile defense systems. Then he's going to pay his respect to Holocaust victims and meet one or two very elderly Holocaust survivors at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem. But then at 6 p.m., that is it for the day. Uh, previous presidential visits have had a kind of state dinner. Biden has nothing, nothing on his agenda after 6 p.m. I suspect that, you know, he's not so young anymore and he needs to rest right. and uh, they don't want him to make any misstatements. Of, so of course, that, 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 meetings, Tom, Tom has, that's, does, that's one, does one, one, that's one side of the, the equation that Joe Biden, um, for all the reasons you've just um, stated, might, might make a faux pas. But also on, on the, the other side, the, um, the Israelis are very keen to, um, to keep their profile very high and to push... Um, uh, various agendas forward, not, not least uh, trying to find some sort of political stability in the country. Um, but it was Netanyahu that um, pushed back against the um, – uh, that um, I was referring to earlier, that, that brought up the, um, yes. the, the topic of, of the housing previously. Is, is there a risk that something like that might happen again, given that oh, yes. um, no, politicians that, yes. are trying to make their mark in, in Israel at the moment? Israeli politicians. Yes, that, that's, a good, that's a good point, because Israel, as, as you point out, is in the midst of an election campaign. And Biden doesn't want to be seen too obviously to be taking sides with the interim Prime Minister Lapid from the centre-left Yesh Atid party. We're, we're, it's almost for sure that Biden's preferred choice to win the election would be Lapid, not Netanyahu, from the right-wing Likud party, who um, is trying to make a comeback and is presently ahead in the polls. For this reason, Biden is also meeting Netanyahu, who is now the opposition leader, tomorrow. He doesn't want to be seen to show any favoritism. Mm. In the past, when US presidents uh, try to take sides during uh, Israeli election campaigns, usually against Netanyahu, it actually backfired and was seen as sort of uh, clumsy interference and actually boosted support for Netanyahu. So this time round, I'm sure Biden is going to be very, very careful to pay due respect to opposition leader Netanyahu, as well as the current Prime Minister Lapid, and not to be seen as taking sides uh, in the current election going on. I'm, I'm sure that Biden will be careful in his uh, 
language and words uh, exceptionally careful. I mean, he is an old hand with, with, as you said, with Israel. He's been here 10 times. He came first, I think, in 1973 as a young senator. So it, he is very familiar with Israel and the issues here. It's not a, it's not a topic he's unfamiliar with. And as you quite rightly mentioned, one of the other main uh, t topics with his visit to, to Saudi Arabia, apart from the, um, being a, a sort of a bridge to help build relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's role in the, the oil crisis that is, again, as you mentioned, uh, going to affect his domestic policies with the, um, with the price of gas back, back home. Earlier today, I noticed um, the, the Kremlin is, is pushing out messages saying that they hope that Saudi Arabia um, doesn't become too close to Biden. So the, the, the diplomacy that's going on today, of course, is focused on the Middle East, but also has um, these um, influences from outside. How do you think Saudi Arabia hopes things will play out during this visit? Well, yes, the Saudis have felt rather aggrieved at being sort of sidelined um, in the last two or three years by the United States, largely as a result of the Khashoggi killing in, uh, in the consulate, in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Um, and this, from the Saudi point of view, they say that almost every other country in the Middle East and indeed beyond has also got a, a less than perfect human rights record. And why are they being singled out? I mean, you know, why is there being the sort of outreach to Iran with the Saudis say the Iranians have a worse human rights, rights record? So in the last two or three years, the Saudis have got a little bit closer to Russia and indeed also a little bit closer to China. So this visit is also very much about Biden saying the United States hasn't gone away. We're not going to cede to the Middle East, to Russia, Iran and China. We're still there. One of the things that Biden will be doing um, when he visits Jeddah in Saudi Arabia on, on Friday and Saturday is there's going to be a so-called GCC plus three summit. Right. And they're going to be leaders not just from Saudi Arabia, but from the UAE, Bahrain, uh, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Iraq, Egypt, and Jordan. In other words, a whole host of important uh, Sunni Arab countries will be meeting the American president. And uh, Biden is very keen to emphasize, we're still here, we're still a superpower, don't get too close to Russia. Um, so yes, the Russians, as you pointed out, are a bit irritated. They want to... Uh, They've been big bridge building with the Saudis and they want to hand uh, indeed with the Egyptians and they want to keep up those uh, somewhat warmer relations with the Saudis and Egyptians. Well, it's going to be a very interesting few days for this visit. We'll be watching closely to see how things turn out. Tom Gross, I want to thank you so much for your in-depth analysis of this visit. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.